Aquí. Welcome to Money, 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 your weekly personal finance date with me, Surabhi Upadhyay. Passive funds have been making steady inroads in the Indian investment landscape. These funds generate index-like returns at a cost which is much lower than actively managed funds. Now, while index funds and ETFs based on large cap indices have been around for quite some time, does it make sense to think of a passive fund which mirrors perhaps the mid-cap index or the small-cap index? What sort of passive funds can you look at adding to your portfolio? and how do they really fit in with your overall investment philosophy. Joining me today to discuss some of these themes are Motilal Oswal AMC's Ashish Somaya and Pratik Oswal. Gentlemen, thank you. Good morning and thank you very much for joining us on the show. Uh, interesting times to be talking mutual funds considering the market shows no signs of you know, any mercy for most investors. Uh, first things first, before we get into the active-passive debate, uh, Ashish, I want to take your sort of feedback uh, everything that's happened in the last month, month and a half, what is the sentiment like out there? Well, I think uh, there is a sense of maturity which has come through, you know, because for because it's a bit cliched, but everybody quotes the SIP numbers, because that is what shows, you know, I mean, we can see that the discretionary flows have actually shrunk a little bit. But what shows actual retail investor confidence is, are they committing more and whatever commitments they've made in the past, are they sticking to them or honoring those commitments in terms of their monthly installments? So I think that is not only holding up strongly, but it is also uh, rising in terms of commitment. So I think that stability is there and I can maybe say that yes, there is a bit of maturity that has come through over the number of years. Okay, tough time to be uh, looking at NFOs, right? And uh, you guys just, I think, completed some of, some of them. Uh, so uh, what thoughts on this and getting more money and what's the response like? So actually the initiative that we have taken is more you know open-ended index funds. I mean we've, we've been in the passive business since 2010. In fact we were one of the first ones who did the first smart beta fund. We did the first NASDAQ uh, fund. We did, the we did India's first mid-cap ETF also. Uh, so, we, so that was 2010. I think this is like a second attempt at uh, you know uh, perpetrating the kind of uh, passive culture. Uh, because uh, so the NFOs that you're referring to were actually the Nifty Bank Index, uh, mm. Nifty Mid Cap uh, 150, Nifty mm. Small Cap 250, and Nifty 500. Mm. So, like you mentioned in your opening remarks, there are funds for Nifty, mm. but there are no funds which cover the whole market. Mm. And in very very simple words, you know, if you don't know what to buy, you buy the market. So oh. that's how that's where the thought process is from. And I think now we are living in a world which is more getting more and more digital, more and more DIY. Mm -hmm. um, lot more intermediaries are moving to advisory kind of mm -hmm. thought processes. So we are giving them, you know, products which can be used almost like Lego blocks or building blocks to fulfill an asset allocation at a cheaper cost. Mm -hmm. That's the idea. Okay, well, I have a zillion questions that already spring to mind because you're talking about index funds that are going to be mirroring the mid-cap and the small-cap index. That really turns a lot of traditional wisdom on its head. Uh, Pratik, uh, let me get opening thoughts from you as well. And by the way, Pratik manages this side of the business at uh, Motilal Oswal AMC uh, when it comes to index funds and ETFs. So the basic question that anybody who knows these products is going to ask you is that uh, active investing is what the mid-cap market is all about. You know, you trust a fund manager to pick the right stocks for you. So how does the concept of passive, simply mirroring the small cap index or the mid cap index, how does it even make sense? Um, so, so if you think about how passive investing has actually uh, performed in the last 10 years in mature markets like the US or Europe or even Southeast Asia, you know, the percentage of passive investing in the US say 10 years ago was around 9 to 10%. Uh, that's gone to around 45-50% today. And also active investing has actually gone the opposite way. So I think what's happening is a lot of investors have realized that you know it's very hard for fund managers over a very long time period for them to be able to outperform the index. And I think a lot of investors who don't want to take the risk of say underperforming the index might choose passive investing. A lot of investors are looking to invest for really long time horizons. So India is a very young country. So if you're looking to say invest, say, invest for the next, next 10, 15, 15, 20 years, it's very hard for you to pick one, speci one specific fund or one specific fund manager. So in th that scenario, you know, I think a lot of investors will be, if, if you can offer uh, something that mirrors the index, uh, something that you know, outperforms or does better than the FD rate, which is what most customers are looking for, then passive investing at a low cost, then passive investing makes a lot more sense. Okay, I should yeah. ask you the same question because, you know, the first thing that's going to spring to mind is that, hey, mid cap, small cap, that's what active fund management is all about. Yeah. So how do passives even fit so, you know, if you see, look, uh, the whole passive thing is a different 
school of thought itself, right? Because there are some people who believe that they can identify the fund managers and the fund managers can identify and add value and outperform. Whereas there are some people who are just looking to buy the asset class. Right? Because if you, if you take an example, why do we, for example, as a house, even we have an active business, why do we invest so much in research and fund management capability? And in fact, we are pretty heavy on the mid-cap side of our total assets. Right? Because we know, why do we put in so much effort? Because we know that when you are identifying small caps, what is the probability of success in a universe of thousands of companies? Our past statistical analysis shows that when you are picking small cap companies from a universe of thousands of companies, your probability of identifying a small cap company which will go on to becoming large cap in the next say 5 years or so, that probability is no single digit. Hmm. So even when we are investing ourselves, we kind of you know whittle down the whole universe, we use multiple criteria, screeners, etc. Hmm. to reduce the error rate. Hmm. 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 So that's a different school of, school of uh, thought. Hmm. But there are many people who believe that you know, look, with these kind of probabilities, with this kind of hurdles, with these kind of complexities, why not I just buy the whole basket hmm. Hmm. and then eventually the better performers will average out for the bad performers and I will get the market return. Mm -hmm. So it's a completely different school of thought process. And the other last thing is that, like Pratik already mentioned, it's very difficult to pick. You know, see, when people enter, let's mm -hmm. say today we are in a digital DIY kind of world which is coming in. Mm -hmm. And uh, on a lighter note, I can tell you to buy a couple of hundred good stocks, we have 500 open-ended funds. Mm -hmm. So it becomes difficult for people to even identify the right fund and the fund manager. Mm -hmm. So some people are looking for simpler alternatives, that's about it. Okay, all right. Well, we've just gotten warmed up. Uh, it's an interesting debate. We have a lot of ground to cover, including the basics. So in case you're not very familiar with the idea of passive investing and you're confused between what's an ETF and what's an index fund and what happens to costs, etc., we start with those basics right after the break. you're watching Money, Money, Money and this week we are discussing the debate about uh, new types of passive funds. Passive funds that not only mirror the Nifty 50 but they also look at mirroring some of the mid cap and small cap indices out there and whether they can really fit in with your investment portfolio. Uh, Pradeek, first things first, let's just simplify this. Not everybody is still uh, you know, used to the idea of passive investing. Uh, so obviously passive and active as the term suggests in an active fund management, management or fund manager actively is churning the portfolio, picking stocks. Whereas passive simply mirror the index but even here there are two types there are index traded funds ETFs and index funds so you know demarcate the differences for our viewers yeah thank you so, so that's just, just to add on to what Ashish said before you know I think most people don't really understand the difference between active and passive investing so if you so I actually spent a lot of my time over the last six months just going out there and meeting customers and uh, the and, uh, and, and this is all over the country and so what I've realized is the average customer doesn't really understand what an alpha is mm. or what a beta is or for outperformance is or an index is or a benchmark is you know so an average customer just wants to do better than something called a fixed deposit you know mm. so for that if you can do it at a very low cost you know it makes a lot more sense you know and, and in terms of you know what uh, ETF versus index fund so we've actually been in the ETF business for uh, over nine years now so we as Ashish said we launched uh, one of India's first smart beta ETFs in 2010 and then we launched a couple of others and what we realize is that ETFs are actually not the most customer centric instrument today uh, for at least the retail and the H&I component uh, because and, and why do you, why do you say that why yeah, are they so, I, so friendly yeah so I think one of the biggest reasons to why that is is because you know, the exchange liquidity that you get in ETF is not enough for people to buy and sell these uh, these instruments uh, okay. for, so today I think so you're saying even today trading in and out of your ETF units on the exchange would, would not be that simple yeah so if you just look at the number of intermediaries you have when buying an ETF you know you have the AMC you have the customer you have the market maker you have the broker you have the exchange so a lot of people actually HNIs or even RIs advisors who want to buy ETFs they have to coordinate between four or five different parties for them to get a good price and even after that you know you end up buying there's some impact cost that is you know so I think even if the tracking error of an ETF might not be as much for an average customer you're actually overpaying by a little bit <coughs> because market makers have have some premium that they have to charge. Mm -hmm. so and plus you have to have basics, you have to have a DMAT account if you have, and you have, to have DMAT ETF account. units. You yeah. can't have an SIP yeah. on an yeah. ETF versus you mm -hmm. could do that on a mutual fund. Mm -hmm. and I think if you look at the ETF concept, you know, it's not really a mutual fund, it's not really a stock, it's somewhere in between. Mm -hmm. So a lot of investors don't see ETFs as instruments of long-term investing, whereas mutual funds is now, I think, people do accept it as you know, something that they can hold on, something they can put in their portfolio for say, three, four, five, even ten years. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so Pratik, hang on. In fact, Ashish, uh, your thoughts on what Pratik just said, this difference between ETFs and index funds, the fact that an index fund doesn't require you to have a DMAT account, etc., is that why, the, you know, a lot of AMCs are now trying to popularize this product? So, I'll tell you something it? ironic, actually. Mm -hmm. I was reviewing all our past literature when we did this thing. Mm -hmm. In 2010, when we launched the ETF, you know, what we what is the tagline we used? We said, trades like a share, acts like a fund. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now that's the irony mm. because that actually makes it more complicated. It does. It yes. makes it more complicated. Yes. Right? Because who are you targeting? It falls between the cracks. Yeah. Because a stock market guy, most of them are traders, they want volatility and they want liquidity. Mm. Whereas this is actually a fund, it's a bunch of stocks, it's not a stock. So mm. the volatility mm. will not be there, it won't trade actually. Like. Mm. Mm. And a mutual fund guy is not looking to trade. He just wants to buy and hold. He just wants to yeah. buy and hold on. Yeah, yeah. So then why should he bother about all this liquidity and market maker and you know. And trading in and, and out of it. Yeah. 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 So that's the challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas when we are talking about passive investing on an index fund, mm -hmm. see you are used to filling a form, cutting a check or going on to my app or website or wherever you are mm -hmm. familiar with and then you are transacting with the asset management company. Mm -hmm. More importantly when you want to redeem, you are sending the units back to the AMC and the AMC is crediting your bank account. Mm -hmm. You are not looking to find a buyer and a spread and a discount and all those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. So I think that's where the crux of the whole matter is. Okay. Now I want to come to the very important aspect of cost because one of the key reasons why the Indian market is really waking up to, to the idea of passive investing is that you get index-like returns at a, a minuscule amount. Uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, I mean I think most of the passive products, whether it's ETFs or index funds, the costs range uh, between I think 50, 60 odd yeah. basis points vis-a-vis -vis actively managed funds which could still be around you know. 200 plus. 200, 200 plus. Bits, yeah. Yeah. So that that would be a uh, fair thing. So the average in the open-ended active funds will be easily 200 basis points, 190 to 200. And for like you rightly pointed out, uh, you know, for for example, there are Nifty ETFs which are like five to six basis points. Mm -hmm. All the CPSE and Bharat 22 is a one or two basis point kind of numbers. Mm -hmm. But yeah, by and large, all the retail products are on an average 50 to 75 basis points. Okay. So we've established two things. A, uh, these are products that mirror the index. So you have a fair enough idea of what the benchmark is and how your own fund is doing. So that's one good thing about transparency. The second thing we've established is that the cost is a fraction. So cost is a huge factor. Why pay so much if you're you're okay with index sort of index-like returns? But now comes the next big question, and I simply picked up uh, you know fund performances over the last one year. Now, if you are looking, uh, this is just an illustration. If you're looking at the worst performing large cap funds in the last one year. Most of them are ETF funds or, or index funds. So for instance, uh, uh, look at the uh, IDBI Nifty Junior Index Fund, the DSP Equal Nifty 50. Now these are the equal weighted funds are a separate animal. We'll get to them in just a bit. There is the Reliance ETF, the SBI ETF Nifty Next 50, uh, the ICICI Prudential Nifty Next 50. Now here's what seems to be happening, that if you, are ch if you have chosen funds uh, which are not the Nifty, yeah. Uh, but beyond the Nifty or are following certain strategies which are equal weighting, let's say Nifty, then you do also end up with pretty you know, significant losses when the market falls. Isn't yeah. that right? Yeah, of course. I mean, it depends on what universe you are actually owning. right? Mm -hmm. Like, for example, you quoted Nifty Next 50 mm -hmm. or you quoted Nifty Equal Weight. Mm -hmm. Now, for example, we know that the broad market, few stocks of Nifty have done well, but the broad market has done very badly. Mm -hmm. So that itself explains why Next 50 or Equal Weight should have done worse than the uh, larger market. So clearly it's a question of which segment or which component of the market you are uh, investing in. Mm. That mm. is what will determine the yeah. outcomes. Only thing with passive funds what you are doing is that within that, like you know you mentioned a couple of important points, you know you mentioned about cost, you mentioned about uh, uh, tracking the index. I think here one thing needs to be kept in mind, it's also uh, adding simplicity. Because you are not going through any selection and identification process, you know it's mm. just uh, going for the particular asset class. And you get what the index gives yeah, in that absolutely. particular period of time. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so it is quite simple. Uh, just to again talk about the best performing funds of, I, I, as I said, the worst performing funds across, and this is not just passives, passives and actives. The worst performers are uh, funds that have mirrored some of the uh, nifty next 50 uh, indices. The best performers, again, because of the way the market's done, are a lot of the Sensex ETFs, the HDFC Sensex ETF, the IDFC, the Reliance ETF Sensex, UTI Sensex. So basically, uh, indices coming back to the point, the funds that are based on large cap indices did well last year, whereas uh, you know the uh, the, uh, the market. yeah the broader market uh, ETFs did not perform too well, and that's going to come back to the central question that you know when you're looking at a small cap index fund or a mid cap index fund, then isn't the risk a lot higher? 
So, um, so I think risk can be seen in different things. Mm -hmm. you know, so I'll give you a simple example. Uh, risk as how we define it as standard deviation of a certain portfolio. Mm -hmm. So when you look at a ETF for index fund, you know the risk is actually even though it might be higher, it's actually consistent over time. So if you see the risk of an index fund the last year versus 10 years ago, it's actually quite similar. Whereas you can really actively manage fund or a lot large cap or a mid cap or a small cap. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a simple example. The risk of a large cap fund can range from 6% every year mm -hmm. to 25% every year. Mm -hmm. you know, deviation. And what, so what and essentially what you're getting is, you know, uh, yesterday's risk is what you're getting today. Today's risk you have no idea and tomorrow's you have no idea as well. Mm -hmm. So you no, know, I and I, I think most fund managers on their portfolio every two to five years. So I think knowing risk is actually more important than actually not knowing what risk you're having. So I think and also when you're looking at you know, planning for so goals or long term or if you're looking to plan for something for five or six years, because you have this twenty track record, which I think is quite consistent over I think 5, 10, 15 mm -hmm. horizons, mm -hmm. you can be, it's more dependable, plus there's mm -hmm. no underperformance mm -hmm. uh, risk. So what mm -hmm. you can do with a lot of investors who want to plan goals for say 5 or 10 or even uh, longer periods can be more confident that index mm -hmm. strategy might work out to be better, whereas an active mm -hmm. strategy you never know, you know, some mm -hmm. some might not do well, some might do well. Sure. You know, sure. So I think uh, risk is something that, you know, mm -hmm. and also when you, when you talk about risk, you also have to think about um, more than sand deviation is like you know long term really long term risk when it comes to sure. the fund manager profile or sure. the the risk of this fund closing down in say five or ten years time. Well, well last you one year has taught us a lot about yeah. risk, not just in equity but in yeah. fixed income as well. In fact, we'll take a break and we'll come back on the other side. I mean, the basic question: If you are willing to look at uh, newer categories of passive funds, then how do you make sure that you fit them perf perfectly in your portfolios? What proportion? How do you mitigate risk? How do you match them with your goals? That's what we discuss after the break. Welcome back, you're watching Money, Money, Money and this week we are discussing the concept of passive funds, uh, specifically index funds and Motila Roswal of course is talking about uh, funds that are going to be mirroring mid cap and small caps in terms of the indices. So, Ashish, here's the thing. I mean, uh, would it be fair to say that this product, uh, which is an index fund mirroring the mid-cap index or the small-cap index, is going to be a high beta product? Yeah. There are years that it will give you a maybe 20% return if mid-caps do really well that year. Yeah. There are years that it could crash 20%. That's yes. something that you really have to live with. That's one aspect. But tell me, in terms of comparing uh, a mid-cap passive fund yeah. with a mid-cap you know, active fund, the ones that you have as well, yeah. How will risk vary between these two products? And then me as an investor, how should I fit these two in my basket? Sure. So I think on your first question about uh, volatility and beta for these mm -hmm. kind of products, there's no doubt that mm -hmm. you know if if, this, if if you have a small cap index fund or a mid cap index mm -hmm. fund, then that's how it will behave in line with the asset class. Mm -hmm. But I think what also one should keep in mind, for example, we have also launched a broad market. I mean the Nifty 500, mm -hmm. and by the way, Nifty 500 accounts for nearly 95 percent of our total market cap. Mm -hmm. So that's an example where you're saying you know you're just buying the whole market because you don't want to spend time figuring out what actually to buy. Mm -hmm. So each of these products has different dynamics. Mm -hmm. In that sense, that is one. Uh, second thing is that when you're saying how does it fit into the portfolio, you know, a fund like a Nifty 500 could be more like a core portfolio. Mm -hmm. You know, something which you're going to put for the next 10, 15, 20 years, like a retirement plan or something, and completely forget about it. Mm -hmm. That could be more like a core portfolio. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that the small cap index mm -hmm. can be more than say for any normal person. You know, I'm not talking about risk seeking or risk averse. No, I'm, I'm saying, saying average, average, average yeah. moderate risk. Yeah, yeah. So then it can't be more than 10, 15 percent of their Mm. Uh, allocation, right? So it depends on uh, what is your goal, what's your risk tolerance. But more mm. importantly, I think it's very simple that the funds like Nifty 500 are more like your core allocation. Sure. Now coming to the active versus passive, you know, how do you allocate really? Yeah, because I mean to go back to what you're saying. So for sure, for instance, if you know in your portfolio you only want to have 10% small cap exposure, that's your risk appetite. Yeah. Now within that, you have to make a choice. How much should go via, uh, uh, you know, and a passive index based fund and how much should be given to a you know actual fund manager to manage in terms of an actively managed small see, cap there are See there are still there are differences between the active and passive you know mm -hmm. and I and tell you that it doesn't all just start and end with the alpha. Mm -hmm. I'll give you another example. Now if you see small cap funds, mm -hmm. what is the regulatory definition? That they can have 65% in small cap and the rest is yeah. you know you can go anywhere. Go in many. Now, what is the reality? In the last few days, the small cap index has actually started to outperform. Mm. Now, all the guys who are running small cap funds with a good large cap exposure or holding a lot of cash, mm. they were looking very, very smart till July. Mm. Right? Mm. But if you see from 
somewhere around the last 15 20 days you see the large cap index is taking a beating and small caps are actually doing relatively hmm. better so i think that you know when you go for small cap funds the point is that anything which is your core allocation anything which is 15 20 years which you want to really forget about there the indices might serve a purpose but anything which is more media, uh, medium term in nature hmm. then maybe you know the actively managed funds might work out better okay. because they will have different types of strategies to you know maybe mitigate risk maybe try to outperform they'll have some uh, leniency they'll tweak things, they can tweak depending things. On they'll have some leniency yeah. on how to manage yeah. those kind yeah. of things okay so i think that's an important takeaway that if you are looking at index funds and if you're mirroring the index and keep that as a a longer term investment so that the average returns over a period of time uh, perhaps even out speaking of returns for the uh, you know final words coming in what should be a realistic sort of rate of return when you're talking about passives um in terms of tracking error how much is the error what is the industry benchmark and you know how do i know that i'm getting absolutely bang on index return um so so i think the beauty about the index is that we have a 15 20 year track record as i mentioned before and i think the idea is more like do you see india growing over the next 15 to 20 years you know i think if we do see that as uh, you snap and then you can expect the top 50 firms or top 150 firms to do pretty well Uh, the reason why the index is actually very interesting concept is because the index is in uh, is actually quite democratic in nature. So what happens over time is that you will have the good companies stay in the index or mm -hmm. they get upgraded, mm -hmm. whereas the bad companies get kicked out of the index over time. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so, so for example, in 2005, the index would have been more infrastructure heavy, mm -hmm. whereas today it's more financial services heavy. Mm -hmm. And if you see, you know, a lot of stocks, I would say 50, 60 percent of all of stocks actually have not gone back to their highs in 2007. But the index actually is doubled over that time. In fact, more than doubled if you count for yeah. dividends. Yeah. Yeah. So this democratic nature of, of index mm. makes sure that you're actually holding the best assets in India True. in one fund, and that and that pool will actually adapt mm. over different changing conditions about the country. I, I take that yeah. point. I mean, companies come, companies go, exactly. but the index remains. That's absolutely well said. Final word then, Ashish. Beyond actives and passives, overall state of the market. I mean, what should we expect? Now we're getting into festive season. Everybody is saying it should be ultimately Diwali should lift spirits. But as far as uh, you know, mutual fund returns are concerned. See, I was I've learned one thing that you know. Let us say that you know somebody has hundred rupees to invest, hmm. and I went to them and say 2013 or 2014, the level of confidence was very very low. So back then, when somebody had 100 rupees, they would start by investing 10 rupees. Mm. Now in 2013, 14, if you invested 10 rupees, in 2017 it became 20. Mm. So the guy had 100 rupees. With a lot of fear in his mind, he put 10 rupees. When the 10 becomes 20, then the balance 90 comes in. Mm -hmm. Why does that 90 come in 2017? Because the level of confidence is like, wow, we can make money. Mm -hmm. So my learning is, and my message to people is that you know your current level of confidence has no correlation with how much return you will make in future. Mm -hmm. In fact, if there is any correlation, it is inverse. <laughs> so uh, you know when you are investing, mm -hmm. look for other things, look for data, look for advice, but please mm -hmm. don't look for what is my level of confidence of investing. <laughs> the most misleading indicator well absolutely i think that's a uh, good advice ashish thank you so much it helps to keep things in perspective specifically when there's a lot of volatility around that's where we'll have to take your leave gentlemen thank you so much for joining us on the show uh, we call it a day on money 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 for today but we're going to see you with yet another theme next week so keep watching